before we get into the reactions of acyl compounds, we have to think about the physical properties and the structure of them and see how they actually relate to the reactivity. So the first thing that we have to understand is that acyl compounds are polar. And because of this polarity, um, they certainly have dipoles. We've seen uh, the dipole of a carbon-oxygen double bond uh, before with carboxylic acids. Um, and with ketones and aldehydes. And so we're going to see some similarities between um, uh, carbonyl compounds of ketones and aldehydes and that of acyl compounds. So one of the things is that they ha typically have higher boiling points than alkanes because of this polarity. And we can see um, if we, if we think about all the different types of derivatives, obviously um, this is acetic acid, right? CH3C double bond OOH. We've already seen the um, boiling point of acetic acid is about 118 degrees. Now, if you compare this to, uh, to the acyl, other acyl compounds, uh, we're going to see that uh, although they vary, they're all fairly high in their boiling points. Here we have ethyl acetate. Ethyl acetate is often used as a, as a solvent. It has a boiling point of 77 degrees. Acetyl chloride, um, so an acyl chloride, has a boiling point that's a little bit lower at 51 degrees. But then we take a look at um, acid anhydride. So this is acetic anhydride from acetic acid. And we see that acetic anhydride has a boiling point of 140 degrees. And lastly, we can look at amides. This is acetamide. Acetamide has the highest boiling point at 221 degrees Celsius. So all of them are much higher than typical alkanes with the same um, molecular weight. Uh, and they have varying degrees of polarity and hydrogen bonding that um, that contribute to uh, the increase in the boiling point. The next uh, physical property that uh, we have to really think about is their stability. So they are stabilized by resonance, uh, and that typically seems to be a theme around uh, uh, carbonyl compounds and acyl compounds. Um, and so when we think ab about the stabilization, resonant stabilization, uh, we can see that uh, that resonant stabilization requires maximum overlap of the carbonyl 2p orbital with the p orbital of the adjacent atom. And this overlap has consequences for both structure and for reactivity. So let's take a look at how the structure um, of the ACO compound affects its stability. And the easiest way to do this is um, to think about amides and compare them to amines. We've already uh, looked kind of at amines before, and I just want to kind of reclassify amines. We see here um, this is a particular uh, amine called a primary amine where the nitrogen has an R group coming off of it and then two hydrogens coming off. And uh, remember, amines are classified a lot differently than alcohols are. Alcohols are classified based on how many carbons are coming off of the carbon attached to the OH. Amines are classified as how many carbons are coming off of the nitrogen itself. So here I have a primary amine and if I have two R groups attached to the nitrogen, it's a secondary amine. And if I have three R groups attached to the nitrogen, it's a tertiary amine. Now, if I think about the shape of amines, we see that um, all of these are trigonal pyramidal, which means that the, the nitrogen is an sp3 hybridized atom, right? Conversely, if I think about amides, uh, here, amides have a general formula R with the carbonyl, acyl group, attached to the nitrogen uh, with two hydrogens. In this particular case, would be a primary amide. And of course, I could have a secondary amide where um, I have another R group coming off instead of a hydrogen. And lastly, I can have a tertiary amide as well. Uh, now, in terms of the structure of amides, they're very different than the structure of amines, in that the bond angle 
uh, between the hydrogen, nitrogen, and hydrogen is all about 120 degrees versus roughly 105 to 109 degrees um, with the amines. What this means is that they are all planar, trigonal planar. And so this says that the nitrogen itself is actually sp2 hybridized. It has a lot of sp2 character to it. And the reason for this is um, due to uh, the lone pair of electrons on that nitrogen donating uh, its pair of electrons into that carbonyl, stabilizing it and into another resonance structure. And that resonance structure is very favorable, as a matter of fact. Now, this also has great consequences um, in terms of the reactivity and especially in terms of the basicity of amides versus amines. If we think about uh, the basicity of amines, we, we, we know that amines are fairly basic. But because the electrons in the p orbital of the nitrogen in an amide are helping to stabilize the carbonyl, that nitrogen th is not basic, right? So the electrons are not um, uh, willing to be donated, right, and act as a base like the amines are. Amines are very basic, amides are not basic at all. So that's important to understand in terms of reactivity of, uh, of amides. And we're going to see kind of how uh, this plays out with all of the acyl compounds, okay? So let's look, take a look at how resonance stabilization affects reactivity. This is a very important um, concept to understand. And we can, um, we can go back and kind of review... Um, both aldehydes and ketones and see how their stabilization affected their reactivity. So uh, when we look at aldehydes, obviously, you know, we have an R with a carbonyl attached to a hydrogen, and we can draw a resonance structure of that where I place the pi electrons onto the oxygen and I create a charge separation uh, between carbon and oxygen where the oxygen has a negative charge and the carbon has a positive charge. And we see that uh, uh, you know, there is this type of, of resonance um, contribution, um, and we also see that aldehydes are, are fairly reactive when it comes to that resonance contribution, uh, because that carbon has a positive, a partial positive charge on it. Likewise, with ketones, uh, we can also draw the same resonance structure, right, where we're placing a positive charge on that carbonyl carbon, making it an electrophile and making the oxygen a nucleophile. So how does this, uh, uh, how, how do the acyl compounds um, differ from aldehydes and ketones? Well, let's take a look at acid and um, acid chlorides first, right? So acid chlorides um, are C double bond O, Cl. We can also draw resonance structure just like aldehydes and ketones, placing um, a pair of pi electrons onto the oxygen. And so we create a, um, a resonance a contributor, again, where the carbon has a positive charge, the oxygen has a negative charge. But now notice the uh, one of the substituents, namely the chloride, has three pair of electrons around it. And so we can donate a pair of electrons from that chloride into create a pi bond. And so the resulting um, resonance structure looks like this, right? Where now the chlorine is, is accepting part of that positive charge. So now we have three resonance structures and uh, and uh, we we see that these uh, can be relatively stable. Um, now, <clears throat> comparing acid chlorides to acid anhydrides, we see that uh, again we can do the same thing, right? We can uh, draw a resonance structure placing uh, the pair of pi electrons up to the carbonyl and generating a positive charge onto the carbon where I can now take a pair of electrons from oxygen, donate into that uh, carbocation, and create that third resonance structure. And we can do this with all of the ACO compounds. And this is going to be important in terms of um, comparing the stabilities of the ACO compounds. 
So esters can do the same thing. Uh, here I, uh, I, I'm drawing my ester, R, C, double bond, O, O, R. I can draw a resonance structure, placing that negative charge onto the oxygen, positive charge onto the carbon. I can donate a pair of electrons from that OR into the um, carbocation, generating a double bond with the oxygen of the OR, placing a positive charge on the oxygen. And lastly, we can do the same thing with amides. So I'm using a primary am amide in this case, and of course drawing a resonance structure um, to create that charge separation, donating the pair of electrons from the nitrogen into the uh, carbocation, and generating my third resonance structure. So the question is, well, you know, what are, obviously we see similarities, but what are the differences between uh, the resonance structures? Well, in the first case, you see that um, the pi bond that's generated between carbon and chlorine is from the overlap of the carbon's 2p orbital with the chlorine's 3p orbital. So um, th that's certainly not the, the best um, overlap that can possibly happen, especially comparing it to that of an acid anhydride where you have uh, carbon's 2p with oxygen's 2p overlap to form that pi bond. And likewise with esters, you also have a carbon-oxygen pi bond uh, of a, the 2p orbital of carbon with the 2p orbital of oxygen. And lastly, nitrogen also has a 2p orbital. And so you see that um, with the last three, we have maximum overlap of 2p, 2p orbitals. With the acyl chloride, you don't have quite that, um, the same overlap, and so it's a, it's a weaker um, resonance uh, contributor. All right, so let's sum up the reactivity. Uh, we see that amides are the most stabilized due to two things, maximum 2p, 2p pi overlap, and because the nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen, um, it has the ability to donate those electrons easier than oxygen does. So comparing um, a, a carbon-nitrogen pi bond to a carbon-oxygen um, pi bond, that carbon-nitrogen pi bond is going to be more stable than that of a carbon-oxygen pi bond. So amides are followed by esters. Um, because also esters have that 2p, 2p overlap, right? So maximum, um, maximum overlap to form that pi bond. And if we think about, compare esters to anhydrides, we see that both of them have um, a, a carbon-oxygen 2p, 2p overlap. However, anhydrides are a little less stable than esters because uh, on the other side, you have another carbon-oxygen double bond. Um, and so you have competing resonance forms with, the, uh, with that other carbon-oxygen uh, double bond. And then, of course, lastly, we have acid chlorides. They're the least stabilized due to the weaker uh, 3p, 2p overlap, the 2p of the carbon with the 3p of the chlorine. All right, so remember, Stability and reactivity are inversely related. And therefore, we can actually order all of the acyl compounds based on their reactivity. The least stable acyl compound is the acid chloride, right? So that's going to be the first uh, one in our list of reactivities. It is the most reactive. It's the least stable. It's the most reactive. And that's followed by acid anhydrides, right? So acid chlorides are more stable than anhydrides. Anhydrides, or excuse me, are more reactive than anhydrides. Anhydrides are more reactive than esters. And esters are more reactive than amides. Acid chlorides anhydrides, esters, amides. This is something that we need to um, really sink into our heads and, uh, and, and understand in order for us to proceed in terms of understanding the 
uh, the reactivity of these types of ACO compounds. And so this is very good to memorize. Acid chlorides, anhydrides, esters, amides. If you can repeat that a few times, then you'll know uh, which ones are going to be more reactive and which ones are going to be more stable.